Did you consume alcohol during your high school years? Yes, we drank beer. Uh, my friends and I, the boys and girls, yes, we drank beer. I liked beer, still like beer. We drank beer. The drinking age, as I noted, was 18, so the seniors were legal. Senior year in high school, people were legal to drink. And we, yeah, we drank beer. And I said, sometimes, sometimes probably had too many beers, and sometimes other people had too many beers. What we drank beer. We liked beer. What do you consider to be too many beers? I don't know. Uh, you know, we, whatever the chart says uh, on your blood alcohol chart. And that exchange was the last we heard from Prosecutor Rachel Mitchell during much of Christine Blasey Ford's testimony yesterday. Republicans on the Judiciary Committee sat in silence behind Mitchell. They did not even speak to say they were yielding their time to her. Chairman Grassley did the speaking for them. But then Senator Lindsey Graham reclaimed his time during Kavanaugh's portion of the testimony, using it to slam his Democratic colleagues. If you wanted an FBI investigation, you could have come to us. What you want to do is destroy this guy's life, hold this seat open, and hope you win in 2020. You've said that, not me. You've got nothing to apologize for. When you see Sotomayor and Kagan, tell them that Lindsey said, oh, because I voted for them. I would never do to them what you've done to this guy. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. And that was just part of it. Joining us now from Capitol Hill, MSNBC correspondent Garrett. Hey, Garrett, good morning. So what is Senator Graham's role in all this? He was, we saw a preview of this in the break between the two sets of testimonies when he went out to the cameras and began this sort of argument. Uh, what was he doing yesterday? Willie, if Brett Kavanaugh ends up on the Supreme Court by this time next week, he needs to send Lindsey Graham a fruit basket or something because that moment yesterday was so pivotal. And it's been telegraphed by Lindsey Graham all week long. Every chance he has gotten, he has made versions of this argument to reporters up here on the Capitol saying that if a man can be brought down by an accusation like this without proof, every person on the Capitol is vulnerable. And in the course of that hearing yesterday, being in the room, you could watch him getting angrier and angrier and more and more frustrated during the course of the hearing until that moment exploded on television. But he was saying a lot of the same things out in the hallways talking to reporters. Here's some of that conversation. When they say that she wasn't sure we were willing to go out there, that's a bunch of bull. I don't know what they told Ms. Ford, but we were willing to go to California. We were told she couldn't fly. All I can say is that we're 40-something days away from the election, and their goal, not Ms. Ford's goal, is to lay this past the midterms so they can win the Senate and never allow Trump to fill the seat. I believe that now more than ever. I don't know who paid for a polygraph, but somebody did. The friends on the other side set it up to be just the way it is. Senator, I feel ambushed. And for folks who felt like the testimony they were seeing in the room was disturbing and ugly and just not the kind of politics we like to see, the scenes in the hallways were similar. Uh, Graham was also confronted by someone in the hallway who told him that she had been raped. Here was the response. Senator Graham, I was raped 13 years ago. I don't remember the exact date. You're so sorry. Would you, do you believe me? Well, it was just as, as contentious of a scene in the hallways in every building in the Capitol between folks watching this, protesters on the Hill, lawmakers, the motion just absolutely dialed up to 11 all day long. So, Garrett, there are a handful of undecided votes on Kavanaugh. First, it's got to get out of the justice, the Judiciary Committee. Where do they stand this morning? We know that Murkowski and Collins and others were huddled last night, including Jeff Flake, to decide what to do after watching that testimony yesterday. Right, Willie, this is entirely too familiar. The two female Republican senators who've been at the middle of every contentious decision up here are once again doing so, once again with the now senior senator from Arizona, in this case, Jeff Flake. You mentioned Collins, Murkowski, Flake, and Joe Manchin mm. all met in Susan Collins' hideaway, their small office in the Capitol, immediately after this uh, hearing concluded, before meeting with the rest of their Republican colleagues, discussing some of the way forward on this. Uh, none of those folks would discuss really anything about what had gone on in that meeting. Collins and Murkowski both told some of my colleagues last night that they were going home to think about this. We did catch up with Jeff Flake, and you can just see on his face in the clip we're about to play how anguished he was about making this decision. Watch this. 
so close call. I mean, you, you, you leave with, uh, with doubts whichever way. That's uh, the nature of this. Um, we're, uh, there's no way you can leave that hearing room certain that um, you're completely right. He's right, she's wrong, she's right, he's wrong. I mean, you just, uh, you're never certain. You just do the best you can. That's what we're trying to do. But Willie, we won't have to wait too long to know what kind of decision Flake made. Remember, he's the only one of those swing votes on the committee itself. So we'll know how he's voting uh, potentially mm. as early as 9 30, 10 o'clock this morning. All right, Garrett Hake on Capitol Hill. Garrett, thanks very much. <laughs> so it's interesting. Um, well, first of all, Lindsey Graham has gone from being John McCain's wingman mm -hmm. in politics to becoming uh, Donald Trump's. Yeah. Carnival Barker. Exactly. I mean, he it's was an amazing he transformation. Had an yeah. audience of one. It's depressing. Mm -hmm. uh, a month after McCain, uh, a guy, John McCain, a guy who worked with Ted Kennedy, who worked with people across the aisle, uh, who was attacked for actually trying to have uh, the, the, the courage, political courage, to be bipartisan. And look at Lindsey Graham now. I hope he's proud of himself. So, anyway. <clears throat> Collins, Murkowski, Manchin, Donnelly. Uh, it sort of had this pack, uh, Gene, mm -hmm. uh, where they were going to either all go with him yeah. or all go against him. And now we have Flake, and you just wonder whether he's going to be part of that pact as well. So that way nobody has to cast the deciding vote to either put him on the court or take him off the court. Uh, well, they're, yeah. they're still yeah. hovering there. I've got to say, just I mean, it's, we we know Joe very well. I haven't talked to him about this. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very hard for a West Virginia senator to vote against Kavanaugh, given that probably mm -hmm. seventy percent of people in West Virginia, I would just guessing, mm -hmm. would probably support his elevation to the bench. You know, I have um, <laughs> I, I've given up thinking that there's a lot that Joe Manchin can't do in West Virginia if he really wants to. I mean, no, I don't think anybody knows that electorate better than, than Manchin. Um, he's well ahead uh, in, the, in the polls uh, in his race right. in the state that is um, arguably the Trumpiest. It is. Uh, it is the Trumpiest I can think of. Um, uh, yet Manchin is, is leading. He was governor there. He's been a senator for a long time. He, he really knows his way around. So I, th I actually think Manchin's got more left attitude here than a lot of people would give him credit for. I think he, he can vote no and he can get away with it. Right. Now, yeah. on, the yeah. Other, yeah. on the other side, it's hard for me to imagine Susan Collins, after saying that she's been a pro-choice mm -hmm. candidate throughout her entire career, mm. selling herself as a pro-choice candidate. Um, can, uh, uh, Somehow, I know she said that he's not going to alter Roe v. Wade. If she believes that today, I, I feel genuinely sorry for her that she has been in Washington that long and doesn't understand what's happening if Kavanaugh becomes uh, a Supreme Court justice. And I say that as a guy that, you know, that voted pro-life uh, my entire career in Congress. But how does Susan Collins support... Brett Kavanaugh after yesterday, after the, the hostility, and after uh, the clear indication that he is going to be an ideologically right-wing justice for the next 40 years. And I think while she may have been undecided before yesterday's testimony, this probably should have shifted her more to the no, given the way we know she thinks. And this is a vote of conscience for her. She does not have to go along, get along, and go along. She can take a vote of conscience, so can a few others, but she really should. She has to stand up and show what she is, stand, you know, what, what matters to her. She's up for re-election in two years. I don't think she's going to seek re-election. This could be her moment to have equally impacted the court for the next 30 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I agree. Can I say one more thing about Lindsey Graham? I think he's got a point, and I think a lot of people watching might agree, that it's a difficult place to be if one accusation can end a career. Right. In, in any field. Agreed. But if he believes that, 
Why not have a law enforcement body look into it and see whether or not it happened? It may not be conclusive, but why not have somebody else look into it so it's not just, as he believes, one accusation, but the findings of the FBI or some other third-party institution? Because, because wouldn't you logically say, Joyce, Gene, wouldn't you logically say, this is a scam, they are setting him up, they are lying about him. They are trying to destroy his career on four accusations that no one has been able right. to independently verify. Yeah. No one. Mm -hmm. No one. And he can be screaming that. Not one. And that is why we need the FBI to go and... If that's what you would logically yeah. say, unless it you were trying sense. to scream, yell, distract, uh -huh. and then call a vote the next day. You know, something that the FBI does when mm -hmm. they investigate, it's not as it was portrayed yesterday, just these 302s that are meaningless. 302s Don't they make it sound like they just yeah, go out, right. smoke a cigarette, right. go, exactly. hey, hey, <laughs> what's up? What's up? I'm going to record you. We're just drinking yeah, over yeah. here, and we're going to leave. This is, you know, two guys who show up on your doorstep in a Crown Vic. <laughs> uh, and they are, but, you know, you're speaking under penalty of perjury, and I spoke yesterday with people who had participated in judicial vetting, and they remind reminded me that one of the things that the FBI does is that they can talk to witnesses who don't want to be publicly identified. And so they show up in the reports as T1 or T2, you mm -hmm. know, that's how they're designated. And what that does is it gives the FBI tips that they can then go and follow up on. They don't take the anonymous sources at face value, but they can follow up on those leads. They can go back to the candidate and, and question that nominee about events that they're uh, told about. It gives them a fuller process. But in this case, we know that there are specifics. When did Mark Judge work at Safeway? You know, Dr. Ford asked repeatedly for that date so that she could specify things. The FBI can do a lot here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, um, I was just going to um, say a word about Jeff Flake, actually, who, whose, whose anguish we saw mm -hmm. visibly there. Um, he can express that angry, anguish. Um, he, he has a vote. He has a vote on the committee. He has a vote in the Senate. And He uh, hasn't done that yet, though. He has not done that He's yet. He's given speeches. He has talked a lot. Um, yeah. and He's given a lot of interviews. Very stirring words. He's written a book. Sensible words. He's written a book. Anguished words. Yet, and, and he's written a book. Where are the actions? It's never translated into vote. a vote, has it? I haven't well, seen the vote. Maybe today. Still ahead, more on the fallout from yesterday's hearing and how it could escalate into more ugliness. Axis Jonathan Swan joins us with his new reporting and will be joined by Democratic member of the Judiciary Committee, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. Morning Joe will be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.